I'm going to show you how to create an iSCSI target server on Windows Server 2016 and then have the client connect to it on another Windows Server 2016. My target server is this computer right here with an IP address of 10.10.10.5. Host name, we call this server core. The client or the initiator is going to be connecting to this server. The client is server 1 and it has an IP address of 10.10.10.1. So let's get started. First I'm going to enter into PowerShell. From here I'm going to type get disk and I can see that I have three disks. First disk is the C drive. Uh, second disk, number one, is offline as well as number two. I'm going to bring them online using the initiate disk. And I'm going to identify number one. And the partition style is going to be GPT. I'm going to get an error message because I already did this. Um, my disks are being initialized, but it does bring it online now. So if I take a look at it, I can see that it is online. And the partition style is GPT. Okay, next I've got to create a partition on that on that disk. So I'm going to use the new partition command. Oops, I gotta spell new. Disk number one size is going to be, I need to be just a little smaller. So 59.8 gigabytes in size. And then we're going to assign, auto assign a drive letter. All right, so I'll assign drive letter E to it. It's a partition number two. So now if I type get partition, you can see that my C drive is here and my E drive on the second disk, which is disk one, is located right here now. Okay, so now I've got my partition. I am going to format it. So format volume drive letter E and the file system I'm going to use is the native MTFS. So now we have a formatted E drive. So if we go to E colon, we have no files or folders. I'm going to make a directory called iSCSI just to keep things organized. So there's my iSCSI. And now I'm going to continue with my commands. So what I need to do is enable the iSCSI target server. So I need to add Windows feature. And I'm going to add the file system iSCSI target server. I probably won't have any change because I already have it. But you will probably want to do this. Okay, so now that I have the iSCSI target server feature enabled and installed, I'm going to create the first disk. And the disk is going to be a virtual disk. And it's going to be an iSCSI virtual disk. So I'm going to create new iSCSI virtual disk. And identify the location. And I'm going to call it one one dot virtual hard drive x. And I'm going to do size one terabyte. So as you noticed, uh, when I formatted it, I only had 59 gigs, but I'm creating this virtual disk to have the capacity of one terabyte. Again, we can get into more details about primordial pools and disk pools. I can add more capacity to this pool. So for now, I'm creating a virtual disk and it has the capacity of one terabyte. Oh, that virtual disk already exists. So we're gonna create iSCSI 1. There we go. All right, 
So now I have iSCSI 1. Sorry, the LUN 1 was previously created in another exercise. So iSCSI 1 virtual disk exists on the E drive. If I do a DIR iSCSI, I can see the iSCSI 1 virtual disk. Okay, now that I have the disk created, I am now going to create the iSCSI target. So I'm going to do new iSCSI. server target and I'm going to call this server core 1 and I'm going to identify the initiator ID the IQN number now this IQN number has to come from the exact name that the initiator has so I'm going to switch over to server 1 and we're going to get that initiator name so to get the initiator name, we are going to open up the iSCSI initiator. So open up the iSCSI initiator, says the server is not running, do you want to start it and make it automatic? And we're going to say yes. And in here, we are going to go to the configuration tab. Here you can see what it does is it creates the initiator name based on the year that Microsoft created the iSCSI initiator sessions. And as you see, there's a colon, and then that is my name. So server one, I had identified a DNS suffix of mydomain.org. I don't have Active Directory running at this time, but that automatically appended to the initiator name after the uh, Microsoft colon. If I take a look at server 2, I did not put a suffix on the DNS setting. So on server 2, if we open up the iSCSI initiator and answer yes, and we take a look at its configuration, because I didn't identify a prefix, I'm sorry, a suffix, the initiator name just has the name of the server being server two. All right, so we're focusing on server one. So that is my initiator name. So I'm essentially identifying on my target server what initiators or clients can connect to that target server. So I need to type that whole thing in. So server1.mydomain.org. So initiator Q is going to be IQN.1991 91-05.com.microsoft colon server1.mydomain.org end quote. Just want to double check. 1991-05, 1991-05. It looks good. So I'm going to hit enter on this. Oops, come on, get back here with me. Okay, so there it created, and if we take a look at it, the initiator ID, so this is the initiator that's allowed to connect, and this is the actual target server's name, and it's generated by server core, the name of the server, and then server core one, which is what we created here. So now we've identified a server target. We now need to link the iSCSI virtual disk to the server target. So we're going to be typing add iSCSI virtual disk target mapping. And it is called server core one. Again, that name was derived from the creation of our server target. Okay, so that's the target name. And then we're going to identify the um, virtual disk. So that's on the E drive in the iSCSI folder. And I can hit the tab key and notice that automatically fills in the information because it's the only file there. Hit enter on that. Now that links the virtual iSCSI disk 
to the target server. And the target server has identified that the initiators I can connect to it is this initiator with the name server1mydomain.org. So now I'm going to switch over to the server1. Server1, I'm going to go to targets and type in the IP address. You can use the domain name if you have DNS working. I'm going to click quick connect and automatically it shows that I have a target server and that was the server core, server core one target and it was connected. I don't have any CHAP or PAP which is the authentication, the password authentication protocol enabled. So this will automatically uh, just connect. Um, again, I recommend you add authentication but for this exercise we're not going to do that part. So it shows that I'm connected and I'm gonna hit OK. So now that I'm connected to that iSCSI target server and I am now able to see that virtual disk. So if I go to disks and hit refresh just to make sure, I see that disk three shows offline, it's size one terabyte and it's an iSCSI bus type. So I know that is coming from my server core, iSCSI target. I'm gonna right click on that, bring it online. Okay, once it's online, I am then going to create a new volume. And I might need to do a little refresh. There we go. And now I'm gonna create a new volume. And I'm going to use that disk. It's going to initialize it because it wasn't initialized. So it will be initialized now. And then it's going to identify the size. I'm going to use the maximum capacity. I'm going to assign it to my drive letter, let's say I for iSCSI, just for fun today. And give it a new volume name. We're going to call this iSCSI. It says server one now has a third disk and there's a one terabyte free. We're going to be creating a volume that's 1024 gigabytes in size, mounting it to the drive letter E, and we're going to enable it iSCSI VAL with NTFS file system type. Great. And hit close. So now we should see down here. Volume SCSI val should show up. If it doesn't right away, we might have to hit refresh. Okay, there it is, the iDrive. And now if I go take a look, I should be able to create files on the iDrive. I have one terabyte disk, and I'm going to create a new folder called Bob and we're going to create a little partner for Bob and bob1.txt we're going to open that up 123 ASDF and hit save so now we've actually created some content on there Hope you enjoyed. That's it.